Hi, Mystery Recap here. Today I'm going to explain an American psychological thriller film called Fractured. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Ray Monroe, with his wife Joanne, and his daughter Perry, is driving home from his in-law's house. It is the day of Thanksgiving. The couple argues about their relationship, as Perry sits in the backseat listening to music on her headphones. Joanne begins to cry, knowing that their marriage is at its ending. As they argue, Perry's headphones stop working, so the couple stops arguing and sings songs with Perry to keep her entertained. Sometime later, Perry has to go to the bathroom. Ray pulls over at a gas station. Joanne takes Perry to the washroom, as Ray goes to buy batteries for Perry's headphones, coffee, and a Coke for Joanne. However, he is short on money, so he ditches the batteries and gets two liquor bottles for himself. Back in the car, he lies to Joanne, telling her that the store did not have batteries. Ray is about to start the car, when Perry notices that her compact is missing. When they do not find it in the car, Joanne goes to look for it in the washroom. Ray gets up to check under Perry's seat but accidentally drops his coffee. Perry is outside the car. As Ray is distracted, Perry wanders off to a nearby construction site. She sees a balloon and goes near it. Just then, a dog comes near her, she starts calling Ray for help. As Perry retreats, she is stuck between the dog and a construction pit. Ray finally notices the dog, and asks Perry not to move and slowly tries to advert the dog's direction towards himself. Just as Ray throws a stone at it, Perry gets scared and falls into the pit. Ray runs to save her and falls into the pit as well, he falls unconscious. He wakes up a few seconds later and sees Joanne running towards them. Perry lies unconscious beside him, while Joanne checks her for injuries. Ray is still in shock and doesn't say anything. Joanne comes to him crying hysterically, but he pushes her aside. Ray closes his eyes, and when he opens it, everything seems normal. Perry opens her eyes, and he takes a sigh of relief. However, her arm seems to be fractured, so Ray gently picks Perry and takes her to the car. Joanne suggests they call an ambulance, but Ray claims to see a hospital nearby. While they drive to the hospital, Ray nearly crashes into another car. Perry lies in the backseat with Joanne and is in a lot of pain. When the family gets to the hospital, Joanne and Perry sit in the waiting area as Ray checks them in. The hospital is crowded, so the receptionist tells him to wait for their turn. As the three of them wait, Perry whimpers in pain. Ray goes to the receptionist again and asks to be sent earlier than others. However, she just makes him sign paperwork and asks him to wait. He goes back to his family in the waiting area, where Joanne apologizes to him for being rude earlier. After a while, the nurse calls Ray's name. The family is taken to a room, where the nurse notes down required information about them. The questions start to get intrusive which annoys the couple. The nurse then asks them to register Perry as an organ donor, but they refuse. Even after being denied, the nurse pushes the topic, but Ray dismisses her. Another nurse then takes them to a ward. Perry is put into a hospital bed, and a doctor finally sees her. He confirms that Perry's arm is broken and tells them that she needs a cast. When the doctor finds out that Perry has also hit her head, he advises them to do a CT scan. The nurses cast Perry's arm. She is then put in a wheelchair and taken to the CT scan lab. It turns out that only one parent can go to the area at once, so Ray stays outside. Perry tells him that she loves him before they part. Ray falls asleep while waiting for them. He wakes up in a few hours, and asks the receptionist about his family, but since the shifts have changed, she doesn't know anything. She asks him to wait while she checks the records. It has been several minutes, but the receptionist doesn't say anything. Ray asks her again, this time a little annoyed. She then checks the morning record, but Perry's name is not in it. Frustrated, Ray asks to see the doctor who checked Perry, but he has changed shifts too. Agitated, Ray yells at the receptionist and bangs her desk, so she immediately calls the CT room. However, the person from the lab tells her that only one old woman has come to the lab that day. Ray is beyond frustrated, he angrily asks her about his family, but the receptionist looks at him as if he is crazy. She even blames him for coming into the wrong hospital. Ray insists that it is not possible, but she ignores him and starts talking to someone else. Worried about his family, Ray runs to the restricted area of the hospital, only to be stopped by the officials there. He informs them of their visit this morning. The doctor checks the day's record but sees no patient by the name of Monroe. Frustrated, Ray looks around and sees the nurse who helped them earlier. The nurse recognizes Ray. Believing that he has proved his point, Ray sighs in relief, but the nurse adds that she doesn't know anything about his daughter or his wife. According to her, Ray came in for a head injury and was alone. Agitated, 
Ray blames the nurse for lying. The doctor assumes he has a contusion from his head injury and offers to treat him. However, Ray almost attacks the nurse and has to be restrained. The doctor injects him with sedatives to calm him down. He is then locked into a room by the guards. Ray tries to unlock the door, but the drugs make him hazy. To make the sedative not work, he injects himself with an injection he finds in the cabinets. He then tries to unlock the door again, but it doesn't work. Hence, he breaks the glass door and runs out of the room. However, before he can escape, people notice him running away. The security chases him, but Ray somehow manages to run out of the hospital and hide in his car. A police car is right outside the hospital too. Taking the opportunity, Ray stops the car and tells the police about Joanne and Perry. The police, suspecting that he is lying, ask for identification. After he shows them his ID, they agree to help him. The receptionist sees Ray walk into the hospital again, but this time, she cannot do anything because of the police officers. She calls the security before assisting them. The guards then let them in. Ray takes the police to the doctor from earlier. The doctor admits that there can be a mistake in the records, and Ray demands they be taken to the CT lab. The doctor agrees, however, the guards take them to the third floor. Ray clearly remembers the CT lab being in the basement. At the lab, it is clear that Perry was never there. Ray then demands to call Dr. Berthram, who had checked Perry that morning. The staff obliges. Just then, the receptionist comes in with the paper that Ray had signed this morning. However, it doesn't prove the presence of Joanne and Perry. Dr. Berthram finally arrives, and reveals that Ray came to the hospital alone to get treated for his head injury. The doctor had asked him to do a CT scan, but he refused, saying that his wife Abby was waiting for him outside. The police officers get suspicious of Ray because he has told them that his wife's name is Joanne, not Abby. Ray then reveals that Abby is his ex-wife, who has been dead for years. Helpless, Ray accuses the hospital of kidnapping his family. The security guard suggests they look at the CCTV camera footage to see if Ray is lying. The group then watches the footage for the morning, but Perry and Joanne are in none of them. Ray claims that it is because of the camera's angle. The police officers do not believe Ray's story anymore. Ray then asks them to go to the gas station to figure the truth. He even finds Perry's scarf near the hospital bed she was in the morning. He claims that this proves she was here, but the police need more evidence than that. The doctors suspect that Ray is not in a mentally stable condition, so they introduce him to a psychiatrist named Teresa Jacobs. Teresa takes Ray to a room and shows him his administration record, which doesn't mention Perry or Joanne. Teresa calmly talks to him and inquires about the incidents of that morning. She also asks him about Abby. Ray then reveals that Abby died eight years ago in a car accident, and he couldn't save her because he was drunk. Frustrated, he starts to cry. Teresa now knows for sure that something is wrong. She suggests the police go look at the place the accident occurred this morning. According to Teresa, Joanne and Perry might still be there. The police officers then take Ray and Teresa to the construction site again. They call for backup to help them with the search. Then they find Perry's compact on the pit. They also see a pool of dried blood in the concrete. The police realize that this cannot be Ray's blood, because his injury isn't that bad. The missing people and the blood make the officers realize that the place is a crime scene. However, Ray, in turn, blames the police officers for planting the compact and the blood to falsely accuse Ray. He believes that the police want to save the hospital for what they have done to Joanne and Perry. Teresa, on the other hand, tries to calm Ray down and asks him what happened to Perry. Ray starts to blabber. Teresa then asks him if he pushed Perry down the pit. This makes Ray go silent. He doesn't move and stares into the distance. The police then arrest him on the suspicion of killing his wife and his daughter. As they are about to handcuff him, Ray snaps. He snatches the officer's gun and points it at Teresa. Then, he makes them go into the gas station and locks them there. Taking Teresa's key card, Ray drives to the hospital in a police car. He hides the gun and goes inside. His plan is to go to the basement, where he believes that Joanne and Perry are captured. While he is at it, he comes across the maternity room. The children remind him of the day Abby died. He reminisces of the death which had killed both Abby and his unborn kid. He somehow manages to get a doctor's apron and disguises himself as one. He gets into the elevator and is about to go to the basement, but the security guard from earlier joins him. He and Ray get into a fight. In the end, Ray strangles the guard to death and takes his keys. Ray is finally in the basement of the hospital. As he looks around, he finds Perry's toy in a bin nearby. Sure that his daughter is somewhere near, he takes the gun in his hand and searches for her. Then, he sees two doctors delivering boxes of human organs somewhere. 
Ray finally realizes that Joanne and Perry were brought here to get their organs harvested. This explains the nurse trying to make Perry an organ donor that morning. Ray then enters a room, and is horrified to see several dead bodies with missing organs. He rushes out of the room looking for Perry, and finally finds her in another room being operated on by surgeons. Joanne is in the corner of the room, highly sedated. The doctors had drugged her. Ray then holds the surgeons at gunpoint, and places both Joanne and Perry in a wheelchair. But before he can run away, the doctors restrain him. They are about to inject him with drugs, but Ray manages to free himself by shooting a device and causing an explosion. Ray finally runs out of the room with both Joanne and Perry in the wheelchair. He kills another doctor in the hallway. He brings his family out of the hospital and puts them in the back seat of his car. The family finally drives away to their home. Perry tells them that her arm still hurts, so Ray sings her a song to make her feel better. Just then, the camera pans to the back seat, and we see that the people sitting there are two random people that Ray has kidnapped from the middle of their surgery. Ray gets flashbacks from the morning, and we get to know that Perry died when she fell into the pit. When Ray pushed Joanne, he killed her as well. Ray's mind couldn't handle the pain of him being the reason for his family's death. Hence, his mind constructs a new reality in which both his wife and daughter are still alive. Ray believes he is rescuing them, but it is revealed that he has kidnapped a random patient from surgery. Joanne and Perry's dead bodies were inside the trunk of his car the whole time. The movie ends as Ray hallucinates Joanne telling him to take them home. And that's the heartbreaking ending of the movie. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.